talk about a current affair that pissed Kiki off. And we were talking about it behind stage, her and Joy. We were getting into it. And Kiki then already got into a bunch of Twitter wars about it today. She'd been beefing with people on social media. An mm-hmm. egregious thing that they released today was the Diddy video of his punk mm-hmm. ass putting, mm-hmm. touching Cassidy. Now, personally, oh. I wanted to get his motherfucking ass whooped. So he, I mean, he really deserved to get really effed up really, 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 really bad. Really, 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 really bad. Like, mm-hmm. seriously bad. But my my thing, who been who been protecting this dude all of this time? Because ain't none of this new. Everybody. And so all of a sudden now it's a problem. He been whooping ass and doing all of that. So now who been protecting him? So I'm gonna let Kiki kick it off because she got a lot of venom that finish getting off her chest, and we are gonna pass it around. Go ahead, Kiki. Finish it off. Well, you know, I just feel like you know it's that whole allegedly you know, word that's been thrown around like, oh, well, it's alleged. Now we see the proof in the video and everything like that. Like now we can actually say that he was whooping on this, this girl and even, you know, the speculations with the other women or whatever the case may be. Um, I had wrote on one of the pages, like, you know, why aren't these women fighting back? I got backlash a lot of it. Like my, my Instagram been blowing up day because I said, why aren't these women fighting back? And I've been like, oh, you know, well, because he's famous or um, because he has a lot of money and, you know, men are bigger than women. And personally, um, I've been in the domestic violence situation before. I feel as though you have to fight back. I don't care what anybody tells me. A lot of these women are saying, oh, well, you know, because he's a man, I hope you, you know, you give the same advice. To your daughters, God forbid, if something was to happen, oh, don't fight him back because he's a man. You got to fight. You have to, whether it's the legal way or physically, you got to do something. You can't just sit there and let a man just whoop on you and just hope that he'll just stop. So all day, my Instagram have been blowing up like crazy because I said, you got to fight back. Yeah, I don't like it. And now, it, you know, it's a lot of these men in the industry who does it. Now we can actually see him dragging this girl up the hallway, kicking her. What are you kicking her for? She all little itty bitty. Well, my my ex, he decided he wanted to choke me. Guess what? I flipped over and I jumped on him. I started busting him in the face. Eventually, a man, have we not learned anything from the What's Love Got to Do With It movie? When Tina was whooping Ike's ass in that limo? We have to fight back. We cannot sit here and just hope that the guy is just going to stop putting his hands on us. And it's sad. And that goes for men and women because it's men out here too to get beat up by our chicks. I mean, sometimes I was an abuser. But, you know, I mean, allegedly. I love how she slipped that in there. Yeah. Yeah, she let you you know she whooped it. Yeah, she beat me in too. Allegedly. Allegedly. (laughs) Allegedly. But wasn't that crazy? Anybody else agree with that? Like, you have to fight back. Well, y'all just gonna sit here and say, "Oh, because he's a man." Right. right. You just right. won't let, let me, it go. Let me hear Joy, because Joy, you added something earlier, but I want the people to hear what you got to say about it. Um, I feel what Kiki's saying with the <laughs> fighting back part. I think the only thing is, is there. I mean, they are stronger, but you also don't know what. I mean, that can create an even bigger issue, and now you're dead. So I'm on, like, I see that one sign, I'm out of here. Like, I think that there's always signs before it gets to this big blow up that you've ignored and ignored and pushed to the back. But it's yeah. like, if you have done that, and now this is not the time to fight back now. You should have left when uh-huh. he choked you before he just beat your ass. You know what I mean? Like, there's, it's not, nobody, it doesn't happen just like overnight where it's just like the situation and this is huge blow up. There's things that have happened that have led up to this like huge situation now. I think it's also a, this situation really reflects like broader issues of power dynamics and abuse in relationships, particularly where one party is holding like a significant influence over maybe someone's career or their personal life. And then also like it becomes really complex and there's challenges that can arise because you're not like, you know, really kind of addressing the, in the situation and being able to resolve these like deeper personal and painful matters and now it's legal and public as well too where we could have avoided all of this 
from the beginning when there was one incident that occurred that might have been more minor. You're just like, oh, it was fine or he was drunk or he didn't mean that. And then he bought me something tomorrow. Like, no, you have to get out of there. And I remember like my mom had me watch Oprah. I was probably like 12 or something. And she had a whole story, like a, her whole show was about like abuse and relationships. And like the first time you see a sign, you need to leave. Um, and I've ignored that before. And, you know, I've been in situations where I was like, that was dumb. I should have like already left. But once I became, then I'm afraid, like I have, you have to go. So I think that it's just, a lot of it is a power dynamic and it's unfortunate, but you know, I don't, I'm personally, I mean, I've fought back before, but I was like, whoo, now I'm, I got to run because I don't know what's going to happen next. I so I think it's from both sides. <laughs> he keep going to beat your ass though. So uh, <laughs> oh, hey. I, am. I had to learn, like, it, 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 you know, I'm sorry. I know everybody has something to answer, but you said something like, well, for me, is I have a daughter. At the end of the day, if my daughter came to me and told me, you know, some guy was beating up and I told her, no, you know, leave. And if she don't, then you better fight. You better learn to fight. And again, you do see those signs and a lot like them red flags. Everybody sees those red flags that we all choose to sometimes ignore. And I've been in it. I had to go to the domestic violence shelter, all types of things. So to see that is just it's, it's sad. It really is. That's why I learned to just I had to fight. Go. Tammy, how you feel about it? So I I, I have thoughts. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm gonna make last one. Um, my dad, I watched my dad hit my mom. I watched my dad hit my stepmom. Wow. Love my dad, very complex man, but I watched it happen. And mm. so by watching that growing up, you know, even when my mom and dad got a divorce, when they decided to get divorced, the final straw was we were having a barbecue and they got to arguing. And my mama, had, she said, I wasn't going to take it no more. And she had a pitchfork in her hand and she chased him around the house with a pitchfork while she was barbecuing. And, uh, you know, the police were called. My mama ended up going to jail because she's the one who had the weapon. And my dad ended up taking me to my stepmom's house. I didn't know she was going to be my stepmom at that point. And I ended up going there afterwards. But that's the person he was. And, you know, love him. I think he was a great father. Bad, bad man as far as domestic violence was, was concerned. Mm -hmm. um, and so what that did for me, I don't like violent men. If I see men who are violent, they show any signs of not being able to control themselves when they are angry to the point where they're going to inflict pain upon something or, or act irrationally, that is a huge red flag for me. I have stopped dating people that I thought were exceedingly violent because that is just not something I'm going to do. And so um, when you're talking about this case, um, I think it's really uh, it's, it's sad because people like Diddy and others in the industry use their money and their influence to lord over these young, impressionable women. And they're mm -hmm. usually much younger than them right? These super young, impressionable women, and they, they promise them the world, and these women feel like they have to stay in these situations where they're getting, they're being abused because that is their meal ticket. That is their ticket out the hood. That is their ticket to, to stardom and to fame and in between. And that that's what makes this situation so egregious and so, like, disgusting, uh -huh. because um, you're not Willie Earl from down the street that's beating his wife because you ain't had a bad day you beating them it's a power dynamic thing it's it it's so levels to this and so um like i said i think that it, as women uh and i think somebody else said this earlier on the panel you have to be able to catch them red flags and catch them early and if you catch a weird like for me if i catch a weird vibe i'm out i, I feel like a man has a tendency to be violent or 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 put it lay his hands on women at all if I get that vibe at all, I'm out because I, I don't want to put myself in a position where I'm going to be harmed. Also, I have four brothers and they all have guns. So I don't want my brothers to feel like they got to go to jail for defending me because I wasn't wise enough and didn't have the prudence to remove myself from a situation that had obvious flags there that I ignored. So. Right. Or you go to jail. Exactly. Because I done been nigger. I hated it. Listen, my mama, my mama know. <laughs> my mama know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. back, then it's like, you know, whoever call the cops first. Right. Right. Good stuff. 
Robin, I know uh, domestic abuse and period is, you know, is something that's, uh, you know, it's something you've dealt with growing up. You spoke, you've been open about abuse. So what's your take on all of this? Um, I just kind of feel like the industry is honestly, it's the same thing with like with R. Kelly, you know, great music. Diddy has did a lot for the culture when it comes down to the music industry. However, at the end of the day, everybody that has party with him and different things like that, you know, they know what he was doing. Everybody's known it. And it's been no secret. And so if you have sat up there and party with him, you knew what he was up to and different things like that, you're just as guilty as him, as far as I'm concerned. But you put him in a room with a with a man. You ain't gonna go toe to toe with a man. Sure ain't. Get his ass. So exactly. So put him in a room with another man, and then let's have a conversation. That's gonna turn out a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And I said I would go to a daily party. I ain't going to the party no more. No, y'all ass wanted to go. No, y'all heard a couple <laughs> weeks right. ago. Hey, so I said, I you to the party. She said, oh, I'll sign the NDA. Okay. But now, okay. now I've seen it. I ain't going to the party. Even if he called me right now, I'm like, nah, I can't go to the okay. party. <laughs> I told you to stay away from a daily party. You want to believe me. Anywho, neither here nor there. Okay, good stuff. Maya, what's your take on that? Uh, I don't believe that abuse knows any age, any gender, mm. um, any color for that matter. It could happen to anyone at any time. Mm. I don't think it's just young women who are vulnerable or um, naive to that. Um, it's some, you know, grown grown women, you know, who are unfortunately products of abuse. I will say that um, growing up, no one ever talked to me about um, abuse, you know, mm. like a man abusing a woman. I've never heard conversations coming up from my mom, my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles. You, nobody ever had those kind of conversations. And I have been in an abusive relationship before. And the man was actually a police officer, which when I look back at it was, was even um, scarier. So that kind of shaped me where I do not date police officers anymore. And it's not that all police officers are abusive, but I realized that after I was out of the situation, and my mom even had to call out um, internal affairs. It was bad. Um, and it was no, and there was no um, red flags. There was no, um, you know, like the way that he handled himself, like I would know that he would turn out to be an abuser. And it only happened one time, but it was bad enough that it was like, okay, you know, uh, I'm not dealing with him anymore. And then he came and retaliated and did something else. Um, but the point is, I was young at the time, but I've also been, I'm a grown woman and I've been, you know, with men who, again, when you say, when people say red flags, because I've had people say, well, you didn't know this and you didn't know that and you didn't see him doing this and you didn't see him do that. And my mm -hmm. response is, does a rapist walk around with something on his forehead saying, I'm a rapist? Or a pedophile walk around with something on their head saying that I'm a pedophile. No, the way people adapt, because we've used that word to, you know, today, um, is significant. You know, it, it's relevant in that people adapt to situations, sociopaths, psychopaths. I mean, just all kinds of narcissists, whatever you want to say. And in order for people to victimize people, they cannot walk around saying, "Yeah, I'm a rapist. Yeah, I'm an abuser. Yeah, I'm a this." You know, right. and you meet a person and you think they're nice. And the next thing you know, you're talking and you're having a disagreement. And you get a pat across your face. And you're like, oh, my God. Right. Yeah. So to me, abuse can happen at any time, any age, any nationality. Um, men and women, um, although we do see women and right now, we're talking about a woman with Diddy. Um, and I don't have a I don't have an answer as to why she stayed with him. Could have right. been money. Could have been scared. Could have been. I mean, it could have been anything. I have no idea. So I don't have a judgment with that. But when I saw it, it brought tears to my eyes. I will say that because I was just like, oh, my God. Like, right. I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, again, like in the situation, trying to get away in New York, in Brooklyn, when I was mm -hmm. talking about my situation. And after he did, ab you know, ab abuse me, I waited till he went to sleep, kind of what they said Cassie did. Um, but I was able to get away. 
Um, you know, he didn't wake up and find, you know, I mean, I'm sure he woke up and tried to find me, but at that point I was back in New Jersey, I was home and in my bed, but you understand what I'm saying. And so people will say, well, how you didn't know this and how you didn't know that. And, you know, all cops are not this and all cops are not, not that, but if it's, I have decided like, I ain't dealing with no more cops. And it's not to say that all cops are abusive or they're bad, but that one time was enough for me to be like, when a cop trying to talk to me, like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, I couldn't do it. You know how to like kill you and make it seem like smoke feels good. Oh, yes, yeah. and it's funny you say that because he said um in this instance he was doing something to my nose or something like that. And he said, Yes, he was twisting my nose and cops, you know, they learn things. And his exact words was, I know how to do things to you that will not show bruises. Those were his exact words. Scared the shit out of me. I was like, Oh my god, you know, and this was a person who was nice and you know, uh, attentive and opening doors for me and this and that. And mm-hmm. we were dating for a long time. And honey, when I did something that he didn't like, all of a sudden the whole different, the whole, the Hulk came out. Okay. Bruce Banner was mm-hmm. going, like, what the fuck? So, um, yeah, you, you gotta just be careful. I mean, I don't, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. when I look at, when I look at it now, he was a womanizer, meaning that he was dating a lot of women. You know, once I found that out, but does a womanizer necessarily mean that he's an abuser? Right. Like, does that go hand in hand? I mean, I don't know. Wow. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of black saying that they should just fight back, and I'm big on fighting and fighting back. So you know, it's always oh, you know, he's a man. Let's say you could bust him upside the head with something, and I bet that stop him. Cause then he'll think twice, like, oh, she ain't going to lay down and just let me beat up on her. She going, you know, fight back. Right. Well, in that particular case, I didn't fight back, but I will say growing up in New Jersey, my, my um, family, besides my grandfather, you know, my aunts, husbands and stuff was pretty much women. And I done seen them whoop some ass of men a few times, you know, coming around to the house or whatever, talking and waving mm-hmm. their hands and this and that. And my aunt, my mother and my cousins, and they brawling, you know, they jumping on them because he may have put his hands on, you know, one of us. And so because we didn't have any men around, yeah, we, you know, they jumped on him and they beat his ass. And as they should have, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you're not yeah. going to sit and watch your mother or your aunt or somebody get beat up. And it's six of y'all and it's only one of him. I mean, we're going to make it, you know, we have to keep things in perspective. But that's right. that thing again, you know, it just is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, I sit up in jail happy smiling in my mug shop. My mug shop is up. Kiki, let's not go to jail. Jim Pugh, I'm going to let you get in on this one, and then we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Kiki close us out with a sex question. Since this is a sex panel, by the way. It, it wouldn't be fair. I mean, I got now I got the world's yeah, greatest sex panel. So I'm going to let you get out with a sex topic. But I'm going to let GQ get in there. What, what you got, GQ? Um, Transparency. Like, like you said, who knows why she actually stayed, why she stayed, but nah, that that's that's wild, bro. That's it's foul. Like somebody enabled that and when they actually find out and they figure out shit, they should get their ass too, bro. That's how I feel about it. Every everybody should be held accountable from A to Z. If you knew about it, knew something about it, like everybody from the doorman to the valet, like you saw it happening, so yeah. And then it's happening in 2016. It's 2024.